It's the most wonderful time of the year, baby, as the big lists are about to drop. And that's why today we're here to present you our Switch Force Top 10 Switch Games of the Year 2018. Gabe and I have been discussing, debating, deliberating what exactly would go onto this list for quite some time, and we're finally ready to reveal our top 10. And for those of you that like long-form content, we'll be posting those full deliberations at a later date. Plus, we want to involve you guys and girls this year, so we're doing a Switch Force Community Game of the Year. There's a link in the description that we'd love for you to click on where you can vote from a list of 80 top Switch games, as well as a write-in segment if you want to rant, vent, or just make a case for a game you love. We'll be picking some of our favorite comments to include in our community video, as well as compiling all the stats, facts, and figures of that big vote. Right now, though, it's time to get into our list. I'm so excited, Gabe, to reveal what we picked. It was definitely an awesome year, and here we go. At number 10, we have the most culturally relevant video game in existence right now in Fortnite. It finally came to Nintendo Switch, and it had a couple of little bumps along the road. Maybe it didn't perform amazingly right away. You couldn't play with people on PlayStation 4 right away, but now all that seems to be fixed, and it is a really good port, and it's awesome that you can play the biggest game in video games currently on a Nintendo platform with anybody else that's playing it on any platform. If your friends play it on mobile, you can play with them. If your friends play on PC, Xbox, PS4, doesn't matter. Fortnite is bringing people together in video games like no other game has ever done before, in my opinion. It's absolutely humongous. Drake is playing Fortnite for crying out loud. So the cultural significance of this can't be understated. I understand that it might not be a game for everybody, but I think we still have to appreciate what it's doing. And at the end of the day, you can have fun with Fortnite. Jump on there, play with your friends for free. You don't even have to be paying for the Nintendo online subscription to enjoy this on Switch. And it's not necessarily Zack and I's favorite game. So that's why it's at number 10, but we have to mention it. Yeah, it really, it may not be a game for everybody, but it is a game for anybody, and they continue to expand in meaningful ways. They just brought in the creative mode, which is super cool, and the fact that you can take it portably on Switch, and it is that full experience that you can play cross-platform, like, that earns it, I think, extra bonus points, and it's it, it is a good game. Regardless of how popular it is, it still is very good, and it owns its number 10 spot with prowess. At number 9, we have Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. This is a fantastic shooter on its own, but I was really impressed, and we were impressed, with how well they were able to port this thing to Switch. Given the speed and the intensity of the experience, we worried that maybe it wouldn't translate all that great, but they found a way to do it fantastically and incorporate motion controls in a way that, some would argue, enhanced the experience. It's a fantastic, grisly, and very good shooter, it makes me super excited for what they can do with Doom Eternal next year, hopefully getting that one day and date. But regardless, Wolfenstein 2, it's got to be one of the best shooter experiences on the console, and it definitely is one of the best games of the year. Yeah, a very adult experience, something that doesn't get represented a ton on our list here, but this is a very mature game with good reason, and we now have word that the next Wolfenstein is also going to be on Nintendo Switch, so this is if this is a harbinger of things to come, we can only imagine the portrait and get better going forward. I don't foresee them getting worse, so that's something to be looking forward to there as well, Zach. At number eight, we have a game that both and I love and appreciate so, so much. With Little Nightmares, the complete edition Oh, man. Well, what is there to say about this game? There is very creepy creatures. There's, like, cool <laughs> boss battles. There is, uh, like, insane platforming slash puzzle elements in this. The atmosphere is so creepy. It's like, I played this outside, like, not Ooh. necessarily in the woods, but I was under the stars away Hopefully from... Hopefully it civ wasn't on a boat. No. I was away from civilization at the time, and that just helped this experience, like get me in that much more of a way it's absolutely phenomenal when it came out it was hyped as one of the best games of the year originally one of the reasons why it's like so low on our list here is because it is a re-release it's a port but it does bring in everything that exists for little nightmares and brings it over to switch in a very convenient package yeah, it does such a good job of evoking a vibe, a mood, and delivering sort of an, an eerie tone throughout. I love that the game retains its spook factor and just its immersion till the very end. The things they do near the culmination of the storyline are very, very cool. I'm not going to spoil them here. The gameplay itself, it's so tactile. I love just grabbing a hold of things, pulling yourself up, rolling along, and when you see those mutilated Muppets coming after you, <laughs> you got to get running. You got to get hiding, and I just... 
I love what Tarsier Studios was able to create. It's a fantastic fit on Switch. As Gabe mentioned, you take it with you and it, it sucks you in. I'm sure when you were outside playing, like you forgot about what was out there and you were all on board with little nightmares. Hopefully you didn't have too many nightmares though, Gabe. No, I'm good. Oh. Hopefully not too many. At number seven, we have Mega Man 11, which is a fantastic revival of the franchise. Nine and 10 were really good games, but 11 pushes things to another level by incorporating the new Double Gear system. And at first I was very worried. We've seen a lot of Mega Man alikes in recent years, some of them not so great, but this one was fantastic and I found it so cool that that system is required. It's not a superfluous addition that was just stuffed in to, to say, like, hey, we have a new feature. You start playing that game like you play traditional Mega Man, and you soon realize, like, gosh, if I'm going to be good at this, I got to implement and learn this new system. And I found the fact that they had to retrain you a bit and then had creative levels, cool bosses, just a really good, smart package, great design, and a, a bold year for Mega Man with the Legacy Collections, the Legacy X Collection. Obviously, he's in Smash Bros., but 11 was our favorite of the bunch. Yeah, you are super on point with what you've said. It's not easy to incorporate new gameplay systems to a game that's been this way for decades, that's beloved for what it does, even art style-wise. We, we have Mega Man 10 and 9 just both go back to that retro aesthetic that people really, really enjoyed. And to take the bold step of like, hey, 11's coming, it's not going to be retro, but not only is it not retro, there are new gameplay elements here. It's going to be something completely different. Speed is a little bit more of a factor this time, and that's something that needs to be applauded because I feel like some franchises, franchises that have been around for this long don't take these risks. And this was a risk. And it seemingly paid off a little bit because people do like Mega Man 11. Now, is it people's favorite Mega Man game? Probably not. But maybe let's give it time and see what other incarnations come from this. But implementing that double gear system the way they did and having it work, still really cool. Awesome levels, some really inventive boss battles as well. And Dr. Wily's still up to no good as always. Zach, and while Dr. Wily is nefarious, you know what isn't nefarious? Cute, little, beautiful Eevee and Pikachu characters and we are going to go with number six pokemon let's go pikachu and eevee and it might be weird to see one of nintendo's biggest games of the year at number six and not like a number like two or three or something but for us it didn't quite do enough new it is a perfect representation of what pokemon was back in the day but other than that the post-game content wasn't necessarily for us zach and i are not going to sit there for nine hours to get one shiny pokemon that is not the way we do things but it did bring pokemon into a 3d space it did make it so that you can like see them in the grass it took away some of the stuff that people love such as wild battles and things like that but for me those weren't things that i even missed as much as i thought and I can't wait to see what Game Freak has up Game Freak has up its sleeve for, for the next iteration of Pokemon. The art style, absolutely beautiful. Hope that carries over. And even catching Pokemon by motion control wasn't as bad as I thought. I actually liked it, except for the finicky controls. So going forward to the next gen, I hope that so much of this carries over. It's pure nostalgia at its finest, and it deserves a spot on our list. Yeah, it is a bit weird to not see it climb higher, especially given the enthusiasm we felt when we first played and the pure nostalgia bomb that exploded over both of us when we first popped our cartridges in. But in hindsight, it just doesn't really do enough. And I think there's a few missteps along the way that make it feel that it is a sign of things to come more so than a realization. And it it, it is an awkward just middle step, it feels like, right? This is the game that is trying a lot of different types of techniques in terms of gameplay and in terms of how they present the package of Pokemon to the players. We definitely hope it goes more hardcore with Gen 8. We know it's going to go a lot more new. And, and frankly, I do agree with you, Gabe. I hope that they do bring over some of the systems, but there needs to be innovation and there needs to also be a, a new storyline, new Pokemon, and of course, a new adventure for us to enjoy. But this one was a beautiful and, and by far the best realization uh, and the presentation of Pokemon. It made you feel like a trainer more than ever before, and it gets props for that. At number five, we have Overcooked 2, which may be the surprise game of the list, but they continue to crush it over there in the kitchen as one of the most fun multiplayer experiences you can have. It is the perfect blend of co-op with a little bit of confrontation. They poured in so many new recipes, interesting levels, tons of chefs. They have supported the game with both paid and free DLC, and it continues to be such an astounding package. I think it is a hoot. It is a riot. It is a 
laugh, a guffaw, a goof, a gaff across the board, no matter who you play this with, it is approachable, but also very skill-based. And going for those high scores is something that I love going back to do. Replayability is strong, attachment is high, and I, I, I have to believe I'm a better chef because of it. Probably. And this is just pure co-op fun in its purest form. It's going to lead you to yell at each other a little bit, especially if you're playing with more people. Zach, you got to wash those dishes, Zach. Stop dropping food on the floor. Why aren't you plating? Like, it's a really good time. I uh, recently had the chance to play this at a bachelor party with like high school friends. And the amount of fun we have, even though we hadn't seen each other for years, really, Overcooked 2 kind of brought us together. And we were just having a blast. And every other word you you use, a hoot. that's a word that I don't even think uh, gets mentioned enough. But yeah, I absolutely love it. It does because of Overcooked 2. Yeah, I I love Overcooked 2. And it's a cheaper game. You can go get it if you have siblings or, or significant other and a group of friends. This is a must-have on Switch. It's one of the best party games on here. Absolutely. All right. And with that, we are going to get to one of the best platformers I've ever played, Zach. And I missed over it the first time. We have Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze being re-released on Nintendo Switch. Now, it costs a little bit more than it originally did on Wii U, but the game is well worth it. The platforming is perfect. The level design is so inventive. Those bonus stages are a thing of beauty. They look like moving art for a lot of the time. And the difficulty that is in this game was something I didn't expect. I knew that it was going to be like a little bit like harder than, let's say, New Super Mario Brothers, But I didn't expect just how good you had to get at this game and i love games that reward you for getting better at them and donkey kong does that yes it was pretty cool that of all the ports this one instantly cemented itself as part of our top four and and it earns that spot as being just as gabe described such in uh, such an incredible platformer that continues to bring you new elements continues to bring you difficult elements and really calls back to a lot of my favorite elements of donkey kong country it it brings in more characters it has cool minecart stages and it has pretty fun bosses i'm not sure these characters are as memorable as the kremlings but they still are uh, pretty cute and charming and just in general those bonus stages they push you to the max it's an a long adventure. Maybe the price point was a little bit annoying. It is a port if you've played it already on Wii U, but regardless, as Gabe mentioned, one of the best platformers that Nintendo has made and very deserving of this top half slot. At number three, we have Mario Tennis Aces, which surprised us and stunned us as a sports title that was just superstar awesome the online is a whole lot of fun they incorporated a single player campaign and the pure gameplay experience of tennis regardless if you are a fan of the racket or not it's enjoyable by all and it is a skill and technique game that encourages you to get better and better and better we saw that even in our own matches Gabe where we started off not really mastering the new elements and and being kind of a little bit loose with our play but getting better and better building prowess you rising to the occasion and beating me and then going online and conquering those tournaments it's a very fully featured package it's a a nice step in the right direction for for sports titles and it has us incredibly excited for what nintendo does next and we're praying for the pitch i was never expecting that i would play over 100 hours of mario tennis aces that's not something that i would have ever foreseen Tennis is not my thing. It's way more your thing. But, I mean, the gameplay is just so, so fun. And while playing online, it does have that one more match element because they're so quick. And you get in, and it's seamless almost. The tournament play is something I wish was carried over into another game on our list that we'll talk a little bit later here. But what they've done is really, really commendable. I wish there was more, though. I I wish there were some more unlocks, maybe a little bit... Um, more to do as far as like modes and things like that but it's tennis how many modes could you possibly have but what is there it's a really good time they continue to support it with dlc there's more coming there's been some release the co-op stuff doubles being added to online they are doing a really good job with this to me this is like only second to splatoon as far as online being supported in a really meaningful way so yeah that this definitely deserves the placement here in my opinion i know it might not be everybody's cup of tea but for me this ta- this tea tastes really really good and at number two, Zach, speaking of tasting good, how do you like strawberries? You like those? I'm a big strawberry fan. Chocolate-covered, so- whipped cream-covered, plain, in a smoothie, frozen, on yeah. a popsicle. Okay. I would say Madeline is also a big <laughs> fan of strawberries. At number two, we have Celeste. I really fought hard to get this at number one because it's a very meaningful experience that is disguised as a side-scrolling precision platformer. There is a lot to love here. A story that like touches you and can move you in very unexpected ways. And for a game that looks like this, to do that, it's 
almost unheard of because we see a lot of games like this on Nintendo Switch where they look retro and you're platforming cool. But what they did here with the story and coming from Matt, make, uh, Matt Makes Games, they made Towerfall, another phenomenal game, to see what they took that and turn it into this. You can see the evolution there, but they've added so, so much. You can tell that this is a personal story for a lot of developers and the love that went into this completely shines here. The characters are really cool. And, and yeah, I mean, I can gush about Celeste forever, honestly. Pulling so many modern game elements and then stuffing them into a 2D package, I think, is what makes Celeste rise above. Outside of the fact that the gameplay is basically perfect, the difficulty is so rewarding, the characters are fun, the colors are vibrant, the ideas and concepts are well executed. It's the fact that they did put story and they did put character and they put heart and emotion into a game of this style that really, to me, will lift it up for years to come. It is a phenomenal package and even being a smaller title... It sits amongst the greats. As you see, we have it at number two, and that is a very, very earned spot for Celeste. I cannot wait to see what Matt does next because he is two for two, two home runs, and he, he has a mind that is able to take these old-school tendencies and merge them with modern thinking, and it I, I associate it with it as well. Maybe not as much as you, but the elements of anxiety and depression and breathing and, and knowing yourself just... Very cool to see, and I think it's a touching experience that also takes you to task with a lot of content and pushing you uh, through all those B-sides and C-sides and collecting all the strawberries <laughs> and climbing to the top of that magical mountain. That leaves us with one game, and it's probably pretty obvious at this point. Our Payday number 2, one baby! Our <laughs> number one title, our game of the year, the Switch Force top Switch game for 2018 is Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and what is incredible about Smash Bros is not only the package that they've put forth, but the way that this game has risen from announcement to launch and beyond. I feel like it has only grown in hype and grown in quality and content since the start. Early on, the, the concerns of what will be there, is it a port, who's going to be involved, to this final package that just jams it with 74 characters, the promise of DLC, Squad Strike and Smashdown being some of the best ways to ever play Super Smash Brothers. You have the whole spirit system that is way more fun than it has any right to be, and you have World of Light, which sometimes we argue is too big and too long, a single player that shines as a way to, even if you don't have friends, fully experience this game in a really elongated and exciting way. It's an incredible achievement. Sakurai is a pure gaming god for accomplishing so much in such a tiny cartridge. Where do they go from here? I don't know, but it's okay because Smash Bros. Ultimate is going to be a game that lasts for a long time. We spoke about support with some of these other titles, and it sure seems like Smash is going to get it. They've already introduced their first Spirit Board event. We know DLC is right around the corner. Piranha Plant is probably the craziest character to come into this Nintendo fighter. What will he be like? What will he hold? And what will they do to continue to support the title? Will they be able to bring in more like they did with Splatoon 2 and ARMS in terms of their online events. That's exciting, but regardless, classic mode doesn't even get discussed, and that's a whole other side of the package. They have a bajillion soundtrack choices and selections. You can even listen to the voice clips. The online has some struggles, and for me, that's the only thing that holds this game back a little bit, but they are working on it, and personally, I've had a pretty good time. I know that there are some concerns, and hopefully those get corrected, but it is impossible to ignore the monumental achievement and near perfection that Super Smash Bros. Ultimate put forth in 2018. It's a true love letter, not just to Smash. Uh, it's to gaming in general, especially Nintendo. Uh, what they did with World of Light just really like resonates. They have some representations for some of these big franchises, and you could tell that Sakurai just poured everything he had into this game. I, I, I feel like he should sell into the sunset, honestly, because mm -hmm. he, he has done everything for us and people love super smash brothers and when i say that like yeah like we all love it but there's some people that like love it and i think sakurai went to bat for them and he knocked it out of the park this time because he put so much into this game and, and not just sheer amount of content but the way it's there and it being inventive world of light like you said just coming in and giving people a single player experience that was so so missed the last go around and he course corrected a lot of what the complaints were from the last one and he fixed it and he said hey this is it i always think back to those memes uh where, where they say never ask me for anything again i feel like mm -hmm. sakura has the right to feel that way because he has given people more than they could have ever hoped with super smash brothers ultimate and you touched on the online issues a little bit one of the big issues i had I already got fixed in the patch just last night so they are 
working towards that and they seem to be doing really cool steps i hope that there's another fighter pack that's something that, that I, I do want to say I, I don't know if there will be but well, let's get the first let's get the first five <laughs> plus piranha out of the way but it, yeah. it really does rise the occasion in every way and i think it's 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 as close to a perfect game as you're going to get and it rises the ranks as maybe the most recommendable and and maybe even number one overall Switch game. So it was a shoe-in for Game of the Year for us this year. That is our list. As a quick recap, from 10 to 1, we've got Fortnite, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, Little Nightmares Complete Edition, Mega Man 11, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, Overcooked 2, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Mario Tennis Aces, Celeste, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Let us know in the comments down below what you think of our list, and make sure to click that link to go vote in our community poll for your favorite game of the year, and don't be shy. If you have more to say, use that form to tell us what you're thinking and why. We'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for not only that video, where we'll calculate all of your votes, as well as some of your comments, but also our full length deliberations if you want to hear exactly how this list came to fruition. In the meantime, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest grades from the Switch and the rest of our year-end content. We have plenty more coming in the form of recap and a look ahead to the year of 2019, which, man, I can't even, I don't even want to think about the deliberations for that game of the year list, given what Nintendo has already announced and what is unknown. It's going to be crazy. For now, though, thanks again, everybody. Fantastic day for myself and Gabe. It's been a phenomenal year. We love you so much. Switch Force, out.